This is Rustlin Williams with Intercession for a Generation, and we're closing out our Dating versus Waiting series with an interview with Breck and Gabrielle Frank. So thank you so much, you guys, for being here today. I know you guys have a lot. Um, they have a lot to share you all, so this is going to be a great interview. Uh, Gabrielle has a very interesting uh, testimony, and she's been my friend for a long time, and then God brought this beautiful man of God along, and I was there with her when uh, she got prophesied to about him. So, And then all of a sudden, he stepped into the picture. Isn't that awesome, you guys? So let's start this interview. Um, how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so uh, how would you describe the wait for you, Gabby, when you had to wait on the Lord for marriage and so forth? How well, I would describe? say um, it, at first it wasn't uh, very difficult, um, you know, because I had told God what I wanted when I was 15 years old. I had told God that, you know, I wanted things to be done his way. Um, I didn't want to casually date. I wanted him to bring my husband to me. Um, and as you know, it was prophesied when I was 21 years old that I would soon meet my husband, um, you know, so it wasn't as difficult as it may be for some people, but it was only because I really, really trusted God and I knew that I told God what I wanted and I stood on what I told him I wanted. You know, there were a few times where, you know, I met, would meet someone that seemed like a potential husband and I'd question and I'd wonder, you know, how come this guy isn't pursuing me? But I told God that I wanted only my husband to pursue me. And so what God would do for me is he would remind me, you know, what did you ask me for? You know, you asked me that your husband would be the only one that pursued you. And so that's what you're going to get. And that's what you asked. So, mm -hmm. you know, God was constantly reminding me, you know, that he had a plan. Everything was going to work out. I needed to just, you know, be patient. So it wasn't um, very difficult. I mean, at times, it, you know, the waiting was, you know, as every woman feels, you know, where's my husband? You know, what, when's he going to come around? But, you know, just trusting God helped. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm glad you brought that up about um, how you you were reminded by God of uh, what you asked him for. Yeah. Because a lot of young ladies feel like, okay, if I'm not being pursued, mm -hmm. I must be rejected. I must not be good enough. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a young lady that felt as though she was not good enough? I would say that um, don't look at yourself, you know, remember that who God created you to be, you know, and focus on what his word says of who you are. Um, as long as you trust in God and you know the woman that God has created you to be and you are striving and letting him cultivate and develop you into that woman, you know, there's no reason for you to feel as if you aren't, you know, the right type of woman for any man, you know. You're the right type of woman for one man, and that's who God is going to bring to you. So you shouldn't have to um, feel self-conscious or insecure. You know, just stand on, on God's promises and know that He has a plan for your for you, and you know He He's your Father and He loves you, and just you know focus on that. Okay, great. So thankfully we have a male here, so we get to uh, get some of the male perspective. How does it feel in, in this room, the pressure being in here too? Two, two, two women I'm, right now. I, I'm hot under the collar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did the weight look like for you, Brad? Uh, about five, six years ago, it wasn't too, pro uh, too much of a problem. Um, I was maintaining about 155 pounds, but now I can't even look at a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> I can't have about 20 pounds. Oh, the weight uh, for marriage. Yes. Um, oh, you thought you were yeah, uh, You know, I'm a little bit slow. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why my book? Because you know how they say marriage puts on weight. So I was yeah. like, okay, maybe he gained some weight. So, no. Um, <laughs> Uh, the way, you know, I think for me, you know, you pray. Uh, ever since I was a young kid, I remember praying for my wife to keep my wife. I said, I would say, oh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would keep my wife whole, that you keep her pure, Lord, and that you would protect her, Father. I remember praying that, and it's amazing that I get to see that, wow, I got exactly what I prayed for. Mm -hmm. And that's just such yeah. a, it's, it's just so awesome, because... I mean, but later on down the road, you know, I, of course, I would, I'd get discouraged, you know, because I'm like, man, uh, sometimes I'd even feel a little rejected. Sometimes I'm like, Lord, you know, there's there's all these women around me, but Lord, I'm not seeing, you know, where's the one for me? Yeah. And so, um, the wait was hard. It was, it was a little bit difficult at first.
first, but um, I told the Lord what I'd wanted, and it was probably one of the few times where I actually did trust God, mm -hmm. and and it was I just told the Lord what I wanted. I said, "Okay, Lord, I'm ready." to see my wife. I'm ready to receive my wife now. And I left it at that. And that was it. And a few days later, I had met her mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it wasn't a dating site. It was a social site given to me by a friend. He said, hey, I got this cool site. Uh, it's christianchat.com. Uh, you should check it out. I mean, it's pretty cool. People just talk on there. Just, um, uh, they talk about like doctrinal things, they, you know, talk about everything. And then, like, she showed up mm -hmm. and I saw a picture, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, uh, we started talking and there it was. Okay, good. You know what, it's so important that you said how you felt rejected at one point in time too because there are so many women out there who feel like, oh my God, it's just so easy for the men. And as women, we're just waiting and we're just going through and struggling. But you guys that are waiting on the Lord, that are serving God and walking with God, you're going through the same thing. That's the reason why it's so important, ladies, to pray for our men. Um, and this is something that I'm learning even more that's important, is to pray for them because they're going through the exact same thing that we're going through. So you guys trusted God. You guys waited on God. Was there ever a point in time where you felt as though, um, am I doing the right thing? And you kind of question yourself. Um, for a little bit, you know, when I did meet my husband, um, you know, um, you know, I started to wonder, you know, is this what God has for me? We were in a long distance relationship. So when you're in a long distance relationship, it's a little bit more difficult because you don't get to see that person every day. And you're trying to build a relationship and trying to seek God and see if this is a person for you. Um, so about a year after we um, met, you know, God led me to end up moving to where he lived so we could, you know, get to know each other better and see if this is what God had for us. But one thing I'll say is that God did give me peace. And so mm -hmm. when God gives you peace, it is kind of hard to have, you know, you can, your, your flesh will tell you, oh, you know, this isn't it. Just, you know, you should just quit while you're ahead and just mm -hmm. don't get your heart broken or anything like that. But one thing I knew is that God had given me peace. And so I just focused on that, you know, and, I, and we both would always pray every day, you know, if this isn't your will, God, that you would separate us. And if it is your will that you'll draw us closer together. So as we, you know, got to know each other and fellowshiped, God drew us together and we felt peace, you know, instead of God pulling us apart, we knew that, you know. Okay. You know. Well, um, I'm going to come back to you, but um, before you met Greg, mm -hmm. you know, when people were getting married around you and people were in relationships and so forth, and you were the only one single, mm -hmm. did you kind of question yourself at that point? Like, am I doing the right thing? Um, as far as uh, waiting on God, waiting on God. Yeah. well, uh, no, I, I, <laughs> me, I'm the type of person I'm very, very strong in what I focus on and believe. So when God says something, you know, and, and this is my plan for you, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna come through mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. my thing is that He's God is true. Yes, yes you know. Mm -hmm. um, so if you focus on God yes. and the truth, there's no <laughs> reason to feel, you right. know, as, mm -hmm. as, you know, the devil did try to come and say, oh. Oh, you you may not meet your husband, but I right. would say uh, that's not true. Right. God uh -huh, said uh -huh. and promised, mm -hmm. and you know God is true. So mm -hmm. um, at times the devil would try to come with you know thoughts of is this you know right or is mm -hmm. this you know the way mm -hmm. that I should go? Maybe I should just go casually date. You know, I had, I had, yeah, I, I, right. I, I mm -hmm. had I had a woman actually that came to me and she told me she said, "Oh, men don't want a woman who's not experienced." And she's like, you need to go out there and experience and, and you know, have sex and do all this other stuff. Wow. And she, she told me that. I did not know that. Somebody and told me something. So yeah, she told I... me that. And I mm -hmm. looked at her and I was like, I was offended. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say anything. I just, I was at work and uh, we were at lunch. And so I went back to my desk and she came to me later on and she said, you know what, I'm sorry. She mm -hmm. said, I wish I would have done what you did. She oh. said, I would have avoided a lot of heartache. And she told me, you know, what you're doing, you should just keep doing it. And she wasn't a Christian, mm -hmm. but she ended up apologizing and I was like you know I know I'm doing right because mm -hmm. even when the devil tried to tell me that it wasn't right mm -hmm. he still had to come back and say you know God is God is true so mm -hmm. you know that as long as you trust God and you focus on him mm -hmm. you know you you're doing what's right 
Yeah. And, and, and to add to what she said, um, she basically waited on the Lord until she got married to have sex. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're doing that, you can feel like you're weird or you're not like everyone else. But she continued in what she believed, even in the midst of the opposition and the adversity. So, yeah. yeah. Good, Gabby. So, was there a time where you questioned, um, were you doing the right thing? Believe in God, praying for your wife, etc.? cetera? Um, absolutely. Um, I, unlike her, I, I struggled in my faith. Um, I was more compelled by my circumstances. It was hard not to be. Um, you know, the weight and things like that, and, and, oh my gosh, you know, I'm this old now, and I'm, uh, and I'm not married, or, uh, you know, uh, this and this is happening, and I'm going through these circumstances, um, the pressure was on, um, but I think when, when I got to see my prayers fulfilled. It, I mean, it was, it was, it was kind of a push from God. It was. I kind of felt like. Uh, I kind of felt like uh, Peter when he stepped out of the boat, and he was walking on the water. Um, and he walked on the water for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I sank in the water, but I was still walking a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I, w I was. It was amazing when all of a sudden she showed up in my life, because it was just, and it all happened like this too. Mm -hmm. It all happened like this when I told God on a specific. I said, "Lord, I'm ready to see my wife now." It wasn't. It wasn't a hopeful prayer. It wasn't. A, oh Lord, please give me my wife. Oh Lord, please show me who I'm supposed to be with. I did pray like that. I did pray like that. But I was just, uh, I just had enough in my spirit. I said, you know what? No. I said, Lord, I'm ready to see my wife now. And it was amazing because as soon as I took that kind of faith, that was, that was receiving from the Lord rather than hoping in the Lord for what he's already accomplished. Yes, come on here. Mm. Yeah. Because Peter says that uh, everything we need that pertains unto life and godliness yeah. is in Christ Jesus already. Right. Yes. And it's like... And it, um, uh, receiving from the Lord, I mean, it was, um, the Bible says that, um, one thing about receiving from the Lord, uh, I just, I just had the scripture in my head and I just forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. Um, but anyways, uh, I, I got, I received um, exactly what I had prayed for, and um, uh, it was just a miracle to see. It just all, like I said, it was clockwork. It all happened. So <clears throat> that's great. It's really great. So I'm sure, and this is for the guys out there watching. When uh, women of God, especially those who are not walking in the spirit, because there is a difference. There are women of God who are waiting on God, who are walking after their flesh. And then there are women who are walking after the spirit. So a lot of the girls that are in their flesh, they can get desperate. You know, their eyes are like hawks and like eagles. <laughs> when they see a man of God, you know, waiting on God, being obedient to God, doing what he's supposed to do, you become a target, my brother. <laughs> So, how did you deal with being a target? Because I know that there are so many men out there who are waiting on the Lord and trying to do what's right. And these chicks just be throwing themselves at them. So, how do you handle that? Well, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's hard for a male, especially with your hormones and mm -hmm. everything else. I mean, you're hot and ready, too. Amen. <laughs> Girls, be hot and ready, too. I Don't mean, believe the hype, y'all. Okay. So, I mean, but... That's why I think it's so important, and I spent a lot of time in the Word of God, um, because I can remember a couple instances. I had girls that would throw themselves at me, and it's just right away. And you know, I didn't even recognize it then. You want to know why I didn't recognize it? Because my heart wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I struggled with my flesh too, but it was amazing because. Um, my heart wasn't, it wasn't, uh, 
for selfish gain. Like I had, a, I remember this one instance where a girl, she threw herself at me and I didn't even recognize it. You want to know why I didn't even recognize it? Because I started witnessing to her. Mm. I started telling her that, you know, that she was a beautiful person and that she needs to, you know, she needs to pray and she needs to just give her heart to Jesus and trust. And then now looking back afterwards, I'm like, wow, that girl was throwing herself at me. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even recognize it. So it is so important to spend time with God. It really is um, for a young man to just trust in the Lord. Yes. And that's the scripture I was thinking about earlier that um, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Come on. And yes. it says, and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. There's two things there. It says the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. yes. So the kingdom of God but that's the that's the kingdom of God, the power, the glory, um, and also well, a kingdom is is established of people. Mm -hmm. So God's plan, mm -hmm. yes. God's uh, uh, being about the Father's business mm -hmm. and His righteousness to be righteous. Mm -hmm. And He says, and then all these things things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. That is simply the byproduct of having intimacy with God. Come on, yes. That's simply the byproduct. If uh, my advice for people, for men of God pursuing a woman, is to stop pursuing a woman. Mm -hmm. Have intimacy with God first, because the automatic byproduct of that is to receive all the good things He has for you. Mm -hmm. You gotta trust in God when He says, "Hey, it's not good that man should be alone." God mm -hmm. knows that. Yes, come on. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm. I'm <laughs> I love that he grabbed the mic and preached. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I want to add this to it because I know there's so much pressure for men who are waiting on the Lord to feel like uh, because the world says in order to be a man you have to be out here getting all these chicks, you gotta be doing all this stuff, you gotta have all this money. But what we want, girls like me and Gabby, we want a godly man who knows how to lead. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at, does he have a heart after God? Does he have integrity? We're not looking at how much money you got. We're not looking at what type of car you drive, so stop worrying about all that. Okay, next question. So, <laughs> so Gabrielle, so you're a very beautiful young lady. I'm sure you have a lot of guys trying to get at you. Um, and with all these guys trying to get at you, it can be discouraging, especially if they're not in the spirit mm -hmm. or they're not where they need to be. Uh, so how did you handle that? Um, well, <laughs> when I was younger, I, in my twenties, I was kind of mean, <laughs> to be honest with you. This um, girl gangster. I, I was, oh my God. this is where I get my swag from. I was way. very serious. Um, <laughs> if you were not followed after God and you weren't seeking him, mm -hmm. um, I had no interest and I wouldn't Amen. make it known. I would just Amen. say, guys, I'm, I'm not looking for a casual relationship. I don't just date around. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would let that be known right away. Mm -hmm. You know, and if a guy was going to honor and respect, you know, where I stood as a woman of God, then I knew that that person, you know, was most likely going to be my husband, that mm -hmm. he was going to pursue me mm -hmm. in a godly manner. My husband actually probably was the only guy that actually you know, was just honored, you know, my, mm -hmm. the way that I felt, you know, as far as dating and, um, you know, relationships. So, you know, as a single woman, I just made my, you know, made it known how, where I stood mm -hmm. and I stood on that. I didn't waver, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. give in to pressure, you know, sometimes guys will pressure you mm -hmm. and make you feel bad because, you know, you're mm -hmm. telling them that this is not the type of relationship that you want. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you know if you want God's will for your life, you will stand on you know what you believe and not yeah. waver. So mm -hmm. I just stood on it. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. I love that. Gabby encouraged me because uh, when I was in college, you know, I'd be talking to different guys, not too many, mm -hmm. you know, but here and there, and then I would be telling Gabby about it. <laughs> and one time she's like, um, you know, I just kind of you know correct them in love and I yeah. just move on. Like, I don't make a big deal out of these guys. Like, why are you tripping? <laughs> why are you making a big deal? So, you know, I started getting stronger in my faith, you know. So I learned a lot from you, Gabby. Thank you so much. Um, so, Brett, how did it make you feel as uh, being the only man who was able to seal the deal with this beautiful young lady? Um, I thought you performed another miracle. <laughs> So praise you, Jesus. Uh, you know, it was, uh, 
it was actually it was actually like a just a load off my shoulders. It's like wow, it's it's done. You know, I'm. It made me feel very good. Yes. It made me feel very good um, to uh, to receive exactly what I prayed for, and then looking back, and then when you when when this all happens, when when the things start taking place, you get to reflecting back in what you had prayed for, and it's almost like the Lord said, "You remember what you prayed for then? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how you prayed for your wife then?" Mm -hmm. And it's like, "Yeah, Lord, I yeah I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like my God, I did pray for that, and mm -hmm. I <laughs> have what I prayed for." So, how it made me feel to seal the deal was just a confirmation in my mm -hmm. prayers. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, uh, Gabrielle, what about you? Uh, how did it make you feel to be pursued in such an honorable way after, you know, dealing with guys coming to you with mess that you were not going to entertain? Because <laughs> we cannot entertain anything, women of God. Um, when you saw someone who was appropriate, who respected you, and who honored you, and who was in a position to cover you as a woman, how did that make you feel? Well, I was very blessed. Um, I was very thankful to God, you know, that he sent the person that was meant to pursue me. Um, so I felt very honored okay. and just very blessed and respected. So. Okay. So there was a brother um, that I talked to, and he uh, now in a relationship where he just shared his testimony as far as uh, not dating for a long period of time uh, until he uh, felt like he met the one that he actually wanted to marry. Mm -hmm. um, so he met this young lady. They both had sort of an intuition where they kind of um, felt as though uh, this may be worth pursuing toward a marriage. And he pursued her very seriously. But he wasn't dating around uh, prior to that. How, how uh, would you respond to that, Brick? And uh, what type of tips would you give me and out here? Um, in pursuing a woman and honoring a woman in that process. Okay. Um, I think that's. I think it's appropriate. Um, to, you know, like like I like I told you earlier. I in my opinion, knowing what I know now, um, don't pursue a woman um, because God will bring it to your attention. I think it, I, like I said, I think that all good things will come through your intimacy with Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Um, the Lord takes joy in the prosperity of his people. Um, and dating has become uh, a form of recreation. Mm -hmm. In today's culture, mm -hmm. it's it's something that you do. Mm -hmm. um, and the word love is tossed around so lightly. I remember telling Gabrielle, I said, you know, I don't, I don't think it's appropriate that we tell each other that we love each other right now. Because, I mean, love is so powerful. This was before we started even in dating. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was ready to say I love you for the first time, it's because I had settled it in my heart and said, this is the woman I'm going to be with. This is something that is going to happen. So as far as dating um, before marriage, yes, I agree that that's probably not a good thing as it's used as a form of recreation in our culture today. Mm -hmm. I know that when I was growing up, uh, men or guys and girls were dating all around me and being dumped the next day and mm -hmm. it was just so sad wow. um, but I think it's it's necessary to to pursue God have a relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the byproduct of that is going to be him blessing you mm -hmm. I don't think it should be anything that you that you should look for. Like they said, don't pursue a, those things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and His righteousness. Amen. And then all these things will be added to you. They'll simply just be added to you. Yeah. So. 
Excellent, absolutely excellent. And I want to kind of um, bring a little balance as well to um, friendship relationships. I know we're talking about dating, but sometimes in the church, um, it's almost uh, encouraged for men and women not to be friends. So while we're seeking God and we're pursuing God, it's okay if you have just a platonic friendship relationship with someone of the opposite sex, because part of the reason why I feel like the weight can be so hard for some single women and some single men is because they just don't have examples of someone of the opposite sex around them that's their age who's mm -hmm. actually living for God. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I'm believing God to uh, send me a godly man who, who loves God and who's gonna pursue me appropriately, and I don't see that around me, what am I believing for? Although faith uh, has nothing to do with what we see, this is a challenge for many single people. So how can you maintain friendships with someone of the opposite sex while continuing to seek God? You know, uh, some men, I feel like the Bible says, um, in order to gain friends, you have to show yourself friendly. So I'm a naturally friend, friendly person. Sometimes I feel like when I uh, show myself friendly, a guy may assume, oh, she must be interested in me. No, boo-boo, I am not interested in you. <laughs> you may not even be my type, but I do see some character qualities in you uh, that I'd like to see um, exampled around me just to encourage me that that is out there. So uh, what would you have to say to that, either of you? If you are not filled with God completely, then by default nature, you will try to fulfill it with another person or something else. So having friends, whether you're in church or not, you will naturally try to fulfill that void in your heart with them. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it can be, uh, I think it can be a, a dangerous area for a lot of single people being in that position if you are not uh, if you are not filled with Christ first then you'll try to fill that with something else and I know that from personal experience um, you know being young and growing up and you have all these pressures around you I mean, not all the time was I, I, I was I filled with God, and I would I would look onto other things. So that that goes with relationships. It can go with substance. It goes with anything. Uh, so, like I said, be filled with God first, and then I think, you know. I think that one is able to to be around. So, in, in a nutshell, though. I think it's okay to have friends mm -hmm. in the church, but I think that it needs to be approached with caution. Yeah, so. and maturity as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would agree. I would say the same thing that um, it, having friends of the opposite sex actually can be very difficult. Um, I know even before, when I was at, before I met my husband, you know, there were guys that I was friends with and um, we tried to maintain a friendship, but you have to be very careful because there's those emotional boundaries that can be crossed. Um, and you don't want to lead someone on and you know because when there's two people that are becoming emotionally close you know one one person is going to like the other person it's just mm -hmm. bound to happen yeah and the other person may not feel the same way and mm -hmm. so you can you know I had that happen to me where I was friends with a guy too. and I didn't realize that he was thinking of me as more than a friend but in my heart I just knew I was never going to you know have those same feelings for him mm -hmm. um, so you have to be very very careful and you have to um, you know know that God is bringing this person in your life to have that friendship and just kind of establish that from the very beginning you know that this is just a friendship you know and you know you can you can have friends but it's 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 very difficult you do have to be very cautious and just mm -hmm. make sure that God is at the center of that friendship and that mm -hmm. You know, maybe that you're going out with other groups of friends, that it's not a, just a one-on-one -on -one type of thing. Because usually when it's one-on-one -on -one friendship mm -hmm. with the opposite sex, it can cross over. And one person is going to feel, you know, deeper than the other person may. So I would just suggest I'm being very careful. Okay. 
Um, I think you guys answered a few of these questions uh, that I had uh, to add to you all. So let's talk about um, marriage as the last question. Marriage is such a big responsibility. A lot mm -hmm. of singles uh, have marriage at the forefront of as if this is the next step. You know, and everything needs to be about preparation for marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with preparing for marriage. Mm -hmm. However, I, as um, Breck said several times, my favorite scripture in the whole world, Matthew six thirty three. We got to see God first, see what God wants us to do in that season, because it may be ten years, maybe twenty years, thirty mm -hmm. years before uh, God is going to bring someone into your life for marriage, if that's something that He's promised you. And, um, you know, the Bible says he lets nothing happen except he shows it to his prophets. So if God has promised you uh, marriage, then he will have spoken that to you in your heart. And he will have confirmed that uh, with a prophet or someone. Um, so basically, what can you all share about um, to singles as advice um, about the responsibilities of marriage and um, the importance of being uh, ready for such a big responsibility and, and not just being uh, so giddy to just jump into marriage yeah. so, you know, you can have some legal sex or whatever the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that uh, the, the biggest thing with, with marriage is that you have to be very selfless. Mm -hmm. um, two people can't go into a marriage if they're thinking about themselves and what the other person can do for them, which is what mm -hmm. most people get into marriage with that thinking and that's why a lot of people are divorced um, mm -hmm. they have very selfish thinking mm -hmm. and one thing that I've you know my husband and I have talked about is that we don't love each other through our own flesh mm -hmm. we love each other through the love of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. um, I can't love my husband on my own I can't you know he's not perfect and my love is definitely not perfect mm -hmm. so sometimes in my flesh when I look at my husband you know it's like oh he did this or he did that mm -hmm. um, but if I look at him through the eyes of Jesus Christ, through his love, you know, it's, I see how God sees him. And mm -hmm. that is something that I recommend to, you know, single people is, is let God love you first and show you how to love other people mm -hmm. through his love so that when you get married, you know, you're not so focused on you. You're mm -hmm. focused on what can I, how can I honor mm -hmm. this person that yes. I'm marrying? You know, how can I show this person how much God loves them, because that's what God wants to do is show us how much he loves us through our spouse. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at my husband, I'm like, oh, what can I do for him to, to let him know how much God loves him? Mm -hmm. Whether it be cooking his favorite meal, washing, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever God shows me to do for him, that I want to show him how much yeah. God loves him. So just letting God love you first, mm -hmm. you know, don't get into wanting to hurry up and get married if you don't truly understand God's love for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, because if you don't, it's when you get married, you're going to be so confused and you're going to be so lonely, um, especially if you don't have that relationship with him and you're not letting him cover you and just be your um, everything. Mm -hmm. He has to be your everything before yes. you can even connect with another person. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing with you know the two of us is that we, we have put God first and that he is our first love mm -hmm. and then we can love each other. So that's My why I <laughs> recommend <laughs> You know when I be listening to that song, I be thinking about that song. I'm like, Lord, I ain't got no first love. You my first love. Okay, Jesus. Hey. Okay, go ahead, Brett. Um, I think what the, th the thing that helps me is to see the model that marriage is. Mm -hmm. The model that marriage is is based off of God's marriage to the church. Mm -hmm. When Jesus Christ was carrying an umpteen hundred pound cross over his back and he was dragging it to the hill of Golgotha. He wasn't thinking to himself, man, I feel so much love right now for Breck or I feel so much love right now for Gabrielle. No, it was a choice. It was a choice that he made. Love is a choice whether or not that person deserves it or not, or regardless of how you feel. Don't get me wrong, there are feelings that follow, but love is not a feeling. That's beyond that. You get to see the attributes of love in 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is kind, it's not puffed up, doesn't lie, doesn't envy, and so on. And it tells you what it's not. Uh, so check that out, the Word of God, because I can't remember them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, but it's important to go into marriage with, I, and I agree with Gabrielle, not with a mentality that says, what can I get from this? But rather, just as a servant that Christ was when he was dragging that cross over his back, what can I give? Because Christ didn't want to be there either. He was sweating blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, and in no way, shape, or form did he want to. In fact, he told his father, he said, take this cup from me. He was terrified. He didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. But he says, nonetheless, not my will, but yours done, Lord. And so I think one thing that helps me, and I think will help the viewers too, is by seeing that kind of model that marriage is exampled after. Mm -hmm. The example of God's love mm -hmm. to the church. And I think that if you can recognize that and you apply it to your own marriage and anything else in your life, it'll work the best. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, and on that note, we're closing this out. Thank you so much again, Gabrielle and Breck. And I enjoyed this so much. So hopefully you all, the viewers, enjoy this as well. Bye-bye.